Come and go to that land. Come and go to that land. Come and go to that land where I'm bound. Lord, come and go to that land. Come and go to that land. Come and go to that land where I'm bound. Evangelist Patricia Denise Frazier, good evening to you. Come and go to that land. Sharika Brundage, good evening to you. God bless you. Come and go to that land. Come and go to that land where I'm bound. Lord, come and go to that land. Kimberly White and all of our friends in Eufaula, Alabama, good evening to you. Come and go. Little brother in the house, Marvin Brown, Reverend Marvin Brown, good evening to you. To that land, come and go. Coach Witt and Gracie Talbert, good evening to you. Uh, Gracie, uh, y'all don't know anything about that kind of singing. Come and go to that land. Where I'm bound, Miss Anna Reese, I got a savior, my Nutta Wilson, in that land. I got a savior in that land, Lord, I got a savior in that land. Miss Enette Reese, Miss Jacqueline Adams, good evening. Where I'm bound, we just sang that back at People's Missionary Baptist Church. Well, the Reverend Dr. Paul Lewis Boswell was my pastor. Miss Margaret Jackson, Miss Rosetta Benson, good evening to you. I got a savior in that land. I got a savior, Miss Yvonne H. Whitfield, in that land. I got a savior, Dr. Gina Jenny Borkins, in that land. Where I'm bound, Miss Mary Thomas, Vernell Nicole, good evening to you. And then they said, don't you want to go to that land? Miss Bernice A. Dare, Deacon Wallace, good evening to you. Don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land where I'm bound, Lord? Don't you want to go, Miss Gray, Miss Gunn, good evening to you, to that land. Don't you want to go to that land, Miss Chiquita Ware, good evening to you. Don't you want to go to that land where I'm bound. We just sang that back at the People's Missionary Baptist Church, Montgomery, Alabama, where, like, as I said, the Reverend Dr. Paul Lewis Boswell was my pastor, the late, the great Paul Boswell and my friend, Miss Cora Welsh, good evening to you. Welcome in to MTV's Tuesday night rendition of Bible study live on Facebook. We'll give a few more of MTV's members and our friends to check in with us. Glory to God. Um, get your Bibles or your iPad or whatever mechanism that you use to uh, read the word and study the word and as we matriculate through Paul's letter to the church at Thessalonica, known as Thessalonians. Now, my assignment is to teach the word. Uh, uh, my assignment, and so that's why I find uh, letters and uh, uh, books in the Bible that you normally don't hear preachers preach. Robert Smith, good evening to you, because no, n number one, in the Negro church, most Negroes won't to be entertained, Miss Minnie Allen and Deacon Brown and uh, Minister Tarbert. And, and so a lot of Paul's writings, uh, letters don't have, uh, they have little inspiration, a lot of information and a lot of application. And so I try, and so one of the things that I want to be able to do is to, when you hear somebody teach or preach Thessalonians, you immediately know that Paul was writing uh, this particular letter uh, to a church that he had established in Acts chapter number 17. Acts two, and we're going to turn to Acts chapter 17 in Luau. 
uh, in Acts chapter 17 while he was on his second missionary journey. Uh, you remember he had gone with Barnabas on the first journey, and when they got back, Paul wanted to go on the second. Barnabas wanted to take his kinfolk mark. Paul wouldn't, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't hear in it, so they split. Uh, Miss Valerie Norm Riggins and Deacon Riggins, uh, Paul and Barnabas split, and Barnabas took um, Mark and went one way, and Paul took Silas, went the other way, and then they picked up Timothy along the way. So now uh, uh, they have a missionary team. There's Paul, there's Silas, and there's Timothy. But when, a, but when you hear somebody say, turn to Thessalonians, you know Paul established the church in Acts chapter number 17. Kimberly, good evening to you. He had been, uh, he only preached in the city for about three, maybe four weeks, and then the hellhounds got on him, so he had to leave and go somewhere else. And uh, he's writing Thessalonians from Corinth, and in chapter number one of Thessalonians, we saw his greeting, we saw his salutation. In chapter two, he was defending his apostleship, and now here in Thessalonians chapter number three, that's where we're going to lay anchor, and we're just going to exegese the text. We're going to let the text teach us, as because see, when I teach, the, the first thing I, I want to know is, what did the writer mean? How did the audience receive it? And how do we apply it to our life? That's called that's called context and exegesis in the text. We're not concerned with what the text means to us as individuals. We want to know what the author's intent was when he wrote to uh, to this uh, uh, to these people in Thessalonica. How did they receive it, and how can we apply it to our everyday lives? Miss Bernice Hutchison, glory to God. Good evening. To you, First Thessalonians. Now we're in chapter number three. Okay, Paul says, and we'll just walk the text. Paul says, "Wherefore, when we when we could no longer forbear, or when we could no longer bear it, or when we could no longer stand what was going on, we thought it good to be left alone in Athens. Wherefore, verse one, when we could no longer forbear, or bear it, or stand it, or put up with it." We thought it good to be left at Athens alone. Now, turn to Acts chapter number 17. I'm going to walk a lot of scriptures tonight. Uh, Ms. Wilson, good evening to you. Acts chapter number 17. Remember the relationship with Acts 17 with this letter, First and Second Thessalonians. Uh, this is where Paul established the church. So here Paul said, I thought it was best that we be left alone. Now, time does not permit me to talk about how sometimes it's just good for you to get along and to be out about and, and to get all by yourself so that you can hear from God. Sometimes we have too many people around us and too many people in our ears. And the reason we can't hear from God is because we have too many other people whispering and hollering and talking in our ears. Acts chapter number 17. Remember, I told you that it was Paul and Silas and Timothy and the missionary team. They had come to Thessalonica. They had preached the word. Uh, for about three weeks. Now look at verse number five. But the Jews which believed not, I tell you, let's go back to four. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas of the devout Greeks. So these were Greeks, Gentiles, a great multitude of the chief women, not a few. So, so Paul establishes the church there in 17. Now verse five. But the Jews which believed not, the Jews, God's chosen people, which did not believe Paul, Watch this. They were moved with envy, and they took a certain lewd or wicked or evil or low-down fellows of the baser sort, just low down, and gathered a company. So the Jews get the uh, low-down, evil, just conniving, wicked folks together and set all the city on an uproar and assaulted the house of Jason and sought to bring them out, meaning where the church, uh, uh, meaning the group of believers, uh, Miss Patricia, good evening to you. Verse 7, we're in Acts 17 now. Uh, we're building on 1 Thessalonians verse, chapter 3, verse 1. Uh, verse, uh, and sitting up, verse 6. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These have turned the world. Obviously, they didn't turn the world. They mean the city upside down. Why? Because they preached Jesus Christ. And they didn't have any other king but Caesar. Verse 7. When Jason had received, and these all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar. See what they're doing? 
saying that there is no other king, saying that there's another king other than Jesus. Verse number eight. And they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. And when they had taken security of Jason and of the others and let them go. Verse number 10. Dr. Tina Holloway, good evening to you. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night to Berea. So they sent them away from Thessalonica to Berea. And continuing thither, they went into the synagogue of the Jews. Here's what I'm trying to get Snoop, good evening to you. Verse 11. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica. The Jews in Berea were more noble, more credible, more spiritual, had more godliness. Okay, if, if, if this freezing up, y'all let me know and I want to start over. In that they received, it doesn't appear to be freezing up to me. In that they received the word, watch this. They received the word with readiness of mind. Here's what I want you to see, verse 11. And search the scripture daily where, whether these things were so. What is Paul, or what did they, uh, what did they write here? This is Luke writing here. That these Jews in, in uh, Berea were more spiritual than those in Thessalonica. Who, they had just ran Paul out of, they, they had just run Paul out of Thessalonica. Now, no, now notice what they did. They received the word with all readiness of mind. So when they preached it, they were ready to receive it. When I teach it, you ought to be ready to receive it. When your pastor preach it, calm down, Thomas. When your pastor preach it, you ought to be, you ought to have a readiness of mind to receive the word. Whatever your pastor is called, pastor, preacher, teacher, prophet, apostle, bishop, little Jesus, it doesn't matter. You ought to receive it with a readiness of mind. But don't stop there. They did not stop there. They, these were more noble. Why? Because they received Mary Thomas, the word of God. Now, notice what they did after they heard the sermon, after they heard the teaching, after they heard the preaching. They searched the scripture daily, whether those things be so. They didn't just take the man of, here with the man of God. Now, the man or woman of God word for what they said, the Bible says they searched the scripture daily to see if what the preacher was saying was accurate. Now, it, it, now you am, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm trying not, not to go there, but how can you give me a sermon and never give me a scripture? How can you give me teaching and never give me a scripture? Because sermons and teaching must be based on the word of God. Mr. Neil Trey Lampkin Smith, good evening to you. And this is why it's important that you carry your mechanism for learning, your Bible, your iPad, whatever it is, and you follow along it and you follow along with the pastor, with the preacher. And if he gives you some scripture, write the scriptures down. And then you go and search them to see if in fact. I put the scripture or he put the scripture in proper context. What am I saying? Feel free to fact check me. Glory to God. If I give you a scripture, write it down. Glory to God. That's why I'm always impressed when I go to churches and I see members with pencil and paper or writing pad. That lets me know that they see a sermon not as to and not as Miss Teresa, not so much as entertainment, but education. Can I ask you a question? When you go to hear a sermon, when you listen to a Bible study, are you going for entertainment? Are you going for inspiration alone? Or are you listening for education? Glory to God for knowledge. My people perish because they lack information and in my assignment. Now, different pastors have different assignments. Glory to God. And when we learn our assignment, that's when we will be effective. Your assignment is not mine. Mine is not yours. I know what my assignment is. My assignment is to exegese the text. My assignment is for when I'm through tonight, for you to understand uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter number 3. That's my assignment. And if you don't understand it, and if I didn't give you the information to understand it, then I have failed my assignment. That's not every pastor's preacher's teacher's assignment some of their some of them assignment is just to inspire you some of them i, I, I don't know what their assignment is but I, i'm not going there all right now notice what they search the word daily don't be afraid to fact check assuming that they give you some facts now if they don't give you any fact then you need to go somewhere else glory to god he says therefore then um uh now 
uh, look at verse number 13. I'm building on 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1, Miss Murdoch, where Paul said, Wherefore, when we could no longer forbear, thought it was good to be left alone at Athens. He was left alone at Athens. Now, and, and, and so now these Jews, um, uh, now look at verse number 13. But when the Jews of Thessalonica and knowledge had knowledge that the word of God was preached of Paul in Perea, they came thither instead of the people. Wait, the same crowd, Miss Angela Brown, Minister, Minister Tarbert, the same crowd that had raised the hell in the Thessalonica, in the Thessalonica church, they ain't got a dog in this fight, but here they come to the Berea church and raise hell there. I'm going to take this out of context, but I need to tell uh, uh, to tell somebody. You can go from church to church, 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 but if you got hell in you, you may be the problem. Glory to God. I'm talking to somebody tonight that have, that, that, that have been in every church in your city and you find fault in every church and the problem is not the church. The church is with you. Devil, if you don't change you, you're going to have the same problem. I don't care what church you go to, but the same crowd. That was in Thessalonica. Here they come to Perea. I mean to Berea and, and stir up the people there. Some people just stir us up. They just hell raisers. And everywhere they go, they raise hell. Glory to God. And then immediately the brethren sent away Paul to go as it were by sea. But Silas and Timotheus or Timothy both there still. That's how Paul got along. And they that conducted Paul brought him to Athens. Verse number one. That's how he got along. The hell raises. So now Paul, go back to verse number one. Chapter three. Wherefore, when we could no longer forbear, we thought it good to be left alone at Athens. Now we are alone. Glory to God. Now, verse two. And sent Timothy, our brother. So at some point, he sends for Timothy and Silas. And now he's sending Timothy, watch this, a, a, a minister of God, a fellow laborer in the gospel. The word gospel is good news of Christ. Now, notice why he sent him to Thessalonica. Remember, Paul had been run out of the ministry, the ministry team in 17 had been run out of Thessalonica. Paul now is in, uh, actually he's in Athens when he sends Timothy to the church at Thessalonica. Okay, he says, and I sent him, first of all, to establish you. I'm not making it up to establish you to to make sure you are firm because Paul only preached there for about three to four weeks. So to make sure that you were firmly established, please get this to make sure you were firmly established. Hear me when I tell you, beloved, to, uh, uh, to, to make sure that you are firmly established in the word. Firmly rooted in the word of God. Now, the reason we preach is to firmly root you in the word of God. Why? Because it's the word of God. David said it this way, thy word have I hidden unto my, in, in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Psalm 119, he said, the word is a light, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Glory to God. 119 and 11, thy word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against thee. The most important aspect of church, of pastoring, I'm sorry, of preaching, of sermon is you've got to be rooted in the, you must be established in the word of God, not in fables, not in sayings, ought to be a good evening to you, not in what mama said, not in what daddy said, but you must be firmly rooted in the word of God. And Paul says, I sent my associate Timothy to make sure that you are rooted and grounded in the word of almighty God. It's all about the word of God. Matthew's 24, Matthew, Matthew 24 and 35. Notice what it says. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word, his word, not your word. All you need is a word 
for your situation. But my word shall not pass away. Isaiah 40 and 8 talks about the significance of having the word, the pure, unadulterated word of God. Now, if you need a prophetic word, that's fine. Uh, I'm not, I, I don't criticize prophetic word. I don't give prophetic words because I don't understand prophetic word. I don't understand how you can, how God going to talk directly to you about my situation when I talk to God every day. I'm not knocking. If you, if your denomination teach prophetic word, that's fine. But just give me the pure, unadulterated word of God. Jesus said this. Jesus said, I don't even say anything that God hadn't told me to say. Chief Brown, good evening to you. He said, I don't even say anything, glory to God, that God has not told me to say. You must be, a, so I'll our purpose in preaching is to establish, is to get you saved. But we can't get you saved unless we establish the word of God in you. Glory to God. We are saved by grace through faith, not by word that any man should boast. The word of God. Never lose sight of the pure gospel. He was born. He lived. He died. He rose. For he died. He died for your sin. And when you believe that he died for your sin and his finished work on the cross, that's called salvation. Glory to God. He died that you and I may live and we ought to give him some praise and we ought to give him some glory. Paul says in verse 2, the first thing uh, uh, Reverend Zimmerman, I, 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 I sent Timothy to do was to establish you in the word, in the word, in teach me the word. I don't want to know what you think. I want to know what the word of God has to say. Secondly, notice what he says. And to comfort you concerning the faith. Now, I can't comfort you to concern your faith until first I establish you in the word of God. Glory to God. The problem is you all don't have any word. You have some cliche. I, I actually heard a guy, I actually heard a guy uh, this week say, Miss Cobb, I, I, uh, uh, doc, Dr. Cobb, I heard a guy say, by the end of the week, your bank account is going to be overflowed. I said, that's just a lie. That's a proper lie. Glory to God. That's a proper lie. Y'all bank account ain't going to be overflowing by the end of the week in masses. Glory to God. You need to know what the, what does the word of God has to say about your prosperity and stop acting and thinking and believing everything is going to happen to you miraculously. That's what's wrong with our culture now. We got people proper lying to us, talking about all you got to do is bring me 10% and God going to make you millionaires. That's a lie. All you got to do, about the end of the week, you're going to be overflowing. That's a lie. Watch this. Even in your church, check this out. Even in your church, the more, the nine out of ten times, even within the body, the people that make the most money are those that have the most education. Education, 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 education. My people perish because they lack education. They lack information. They lack knowledge. Glory to God. We have gotten to go. We got to go back to stop it, to, to, to stop acting like God does, uh, uh, like like you got a, a job making $200 a week and all you got to do is bring God 20 of it and in 20 days you're going to be a millionaire. The devil is a lie. That's why what you are doing is not working because what you are doing is not based on the word of God. You need a plan. Glory to God. You need a plan. For, does God want you prosperous? Of course he wants you prosperous. God doesn't want you broke, 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 busted, and disgusted. But we must go back, glory to God, to the basics. We must go back to the basics. He says, I want to comfort you. Oh, my God. I feel a priest coming on here. He wants to come. Now, when I say education, I'm not necessarily talking about formal education. I mean, I, I mean, there are some bricklayers that make a whole a heck of a lot more, to, uh, more money than teachers. Glory to God. There are some beauticians. I mean, just go educate yourself in something. Find out what you do and what you do well and educate yourself in it and then start walking by biblical principles and watch God start opening up doors for you. It's not happening overnight. 
It's not, please understand me. It's not, it didn't happen overnight for me. It ain't going to happen overnight for you. Now, does God miraculously from time to time give people? Yes. But that's not genuinely the way it happened. And I'm talking to somebody who, who, who people have convinced you that it's going to happen overnight. That all you got to do is do this. And in the morning, there's going to be a Mercedes in your, in your driveway. The devil is a lie. You want a Mercedes? Go to school. Get your education. Go, uh, establish some good credit. Pay your bills on time. And get a 0% interest rate. Glory to God. Pay your tithes. <laughs> Pay your tithes along the way. Love God uh, uh, along the way. Give along the way. And watch God bless you. That's the principle of God. But you got people talking about, well, it, well, you know, if you bring me this amount of money, I'll pray for you. The devil is alive. I've learned how to pray for myself. Let me say it again. I've learned how to go. The wall of petition has come down when Jesus died. I don't need you to go to God for me. Now, do I need a pastor? Yes. Jeremiah 3, 15. I will give you pastors that will feed you, that will guide you, guard you, and grow you. But I can get to God myself. You can get to God yourself. And that's my problem a lot of times with those so-called prophets. I'm not saying that there are no real prophets, but I'm saying there are few and they are far between. Their goal is to keep you dependent on them and not on the word of God. Because it's all about what God told me about you, not what the word Word of God said, but what God told me. So in order for you to know what God said, you got to come through me and I reject that. Glory to God. I'll talk about that uh, uh, at another day. He says, I need to establish you in the word of God. Then I need to comfort you in the faith. But before I can accomplish you in the faith, I got to establish you in the word of God. In other words, I got to establish your faith. Because write that down. If you don't have a word, you don't have any faith. <laughs> oh my God! Let me say it again. If you, Miss uh, uh, Miss Betty Glitter, if you don't have any word, I may not get very far in Thessalonians chapter three, verse one, verse two. If you don't have any word, you don't have any faith. I, don't, Pastor, I just don't. I just don't believe that. I, I, I just don't believe that. Well, read Romans chapter ten, verse seventeen. It says. It, 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 it said, faith cometh, faith cometh, how you get it, by what? By hearing, hearing what? The word of God. Not necessarily by hearing with your ears, but by how you take in. Deacon Yancey, good evening to you. He says, faith cometh by how much knowledge and information you take in. I know it says here hearing, but if that literally meant hearing, that meant deaf mute wouldn't get saved. And, and, and I know that's not true. So what, is, what the writer is saying here, faith cometh by the information that you take in. And everything you have faith in has said something to you. Oh, my God. Make it plain, Pastor. Even the chair you sat down, the chair before you set your behind down in it, you looked at it and get what that chair said to you. I'm big enough to hold you. Now, now, what if it had been a baby chair? What did it say to you? I can't hold you. That's how you get your faith. Faith cometh by hearing. It says here, but hearing by the. So we're going right back to the word. You can't get around the word of God. What is faith? I'm glad you asked. Uh, Hebrews chapter number 11 says, now faith is. Now faith. Now in the Greek, the word now is not there. It simply says faith is. Faith is, but it still means faith is present. It says faith is mm, the substance, the word of God, the sub. What, what does sub mean? Sub means beneath. What, uh, 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 what does stands mean? What you are standing on. So what is faith? Faith, first of all, is the word of God that you are standing on. If you don't have a word, you don't have faith. Let me say it again. If you got a cliche or, 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 or if you just got some, uh, some kind of foolishness, then you don't have faith. Faith is based on what God has said. Faith in the Greek is said, faith is the title deed. It is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence, Ms. Driver, me, and the evidence of things not yet seen. What is the title deed? The title deed, I told you all this story before, and I'll tell you again. The title deed, Mary Thomas, is your proof that you got what you say you got, even though what you say you got is not there right there. Mm, it's the title deed. I'll never forget. I told you all this story before, Pr uh, uh, Priscilla. Uh, uh, when we first moved to Auburn, uh, we were living in, in, in Montgomery, 
and we had rented a room in the Hampton Inn right down the street from the church so we wouldn't have to drive up and it was football season and glory to God and we show up on that Friday on that Saturday looking for a room and the manager said you don't have a room and God oh my God at, at, at that point I, I was only 98% saved I'm about 99 and a half I'm, I'm fully saved but sometimes I got some issue and, and, and at that time I had about 2% issue not at least I'm down to 1 and, and I'm getting ready to go off I'm getting ready to get loose all my religion Priscilla, I'm a mirror and, and Reverend, I'm getting ready to go all my driver. And my wife said, I got this. I said, okay. And I ain't never heard her kid cuss nobody out. I said, oh, you finna cuss them out? She said, no. She reached in her purse and she said, sir, <clears throat> excuse me, I have in my hand a confirmation number that guarantees me a room, us a room. The man said, give me the number. Glory to God. She gave her him the number. The man said, you are right. Mm, glory to God. He says, I did promise you a room. You got a room. Glory to God. So what was her substance? Her substance was, her, her title deed was the confirmation number that says, you promised me a room, and therefore, I'm going to get a room. So that, so whatever situation you are going through, faith, glory to God, is your confirmation number. If you're sick, by his strife, I am healed. If you're broke, oh my God, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord shall supply my every need. If you're down in the dumps with your blue, Philippians 3 and 4, he'll give you peace that pass all understanding. If you got tears in your eye, weeping may endure for a night, but joy, those are your confirmation number. Can I ask you a question tonight? What you're going through, do you have a a word, a confirmation number that says what you are asking, uh, that what you are waiting for, that what you are hoping for, that what you are praying for, <coughs> glory to God, is in fact in the word of God. He says, man, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> he said, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. I'm still in verse number three. He said, to comfort you concerning your faith. I got to establish your faith before I comfort you in your faith. I told you how you get faith by hearing the word of God. I told you what faith is. It's the, uh, it's, it's the word of God that you are standing on. Now, your faith, watch this, Jacqueline, your faith must grow. I'm giving you biblical principles here. Your faith has got to grow and your faith will only grow as it relates to your hunger and your eating up the word. If you are not hungry for the pure word of God, your faith will not grow. If your faith is in hum a human being, then that's where your faith is going to be. But God wants your faith in the word of God. Of God. That, that's where he wants your faith. And your faith has to grow. It's growing faith. Glory to God. There's no faith, Matthew chapter number 4. There's little faith, Matthew 16. There's great faith, Matthew chapter 8. There's full of faith, Stephen, Acts chapter 6. So your faith has to grow, watch this, from no faith to little faith to great faith to full of faith. How does it grow? By taking in the word. How does it grow? By eating and dissecting and ingesting the word of God. And the more word you get in you, the more your faith grows. Wait a minute, Pastor. Wait a minute, y'all. Pastor's confusing me. I thought my faith only had to be the size of a mustard seed. That ain't in the Greek text. The Greek text never says the size of a mustard seed. Mm. Let's, let's walk the text. Turn to uh, Luke chapter 17. Let me set somebody free. Reverend, where I get even you. Turn to Luke chapter number 17. Glory to God. I've got to establish you in the faith before I can do what he says in verse 2, comfort you in the faith. Because you're going to need some faith to get through what you're going through. Teach Betty Brown's oldest boy. The Greek never said the faith the size of a mustard seed. Luke chapter 17, verse number 5. Uh, I think that's what I want. Du -du 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 -du. And the apostles, okay, those who uh, the apostles here 
uh, means his disciples and apostles. The, the, they use the word simultaneously, although etymologically they have different meanings. Not going to let that. Said unto him, Lord, Master, increase our faith. Wait a minute. Increase our faith? I thought you only had to have faith to sign a muscle. Notice, notice he did not tell, he did not rebuke them for saying increase our faith. Now notice what Jesus said. And the Lord said, if he had, if ye, if you have faith as, underline the word as, he didn't say the size of. He says, if you have faith as, I'm teaching on faith now, based on Paul said, I'm comforting you in the faith, talking to the Thessalonians. Hopefully I can help somebody with their faith walk. Your faith has to grow. It starts off as a mustard seed. You might say to the sycamore tree, be thou plucked up and be, and be thou planted into the sea, and it shall obey you. He says faith as. I think that's called a simile, like or as. So your faith is as a mustard seed. Now, hopefully the devil will lose this thing. Uh, now let's see what does a mustard seed do. Okay? Turn in your Bible to Mark chapter number four. Is that where I want to go? I think so. Mark chapter four. Mark four verses 30 through 32. Mark four. 30. I think that's what I want. Here it is. Um, verse number 30. Wherefore shall the kingdom of heaven of God be, be compared to it? It is like a grain of mustard seed which is sown in the earth. So that little seed is sown in the earth. It is less than all the seeds to be in the earth. So your faith starts off less than anything else. No faith, little faith, great faith, full of faith. Verse 32. But when it has sown, watch this. It doesn't stay little. Your faith cannot stay little. Glory to God. First Corinthians chapter 13, Paul said, in order to move a mountain, you got to have great faith, full of faith. Matter of fact, he calls it all faith. Read it. Search the scripture. <laughs> But when it is sown, it groweth up. So your faith has to grow as the seed and becometh greater than all herbs and shooteth out great branches. You want your faith to grow? Take in the word of God. Plant the seed. Plant the seed, the word of God. Keep eating and watering and watering and glorying the word of God and you will move now watch this, so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. So your faith cannot stay small it's got to grow from no faith to little faith to great faith to full of faith. L let me give you an, an example. I remember when I taught um, uh, my, uh, Victor how to drive. Okay, this has been not too long ago. I was, I was, I was teaching my drive. When I, start, when, when I first started teaching him, I had no faith. Devil, he on one side. As a matter of fact, uh, when I first started teaching him, I had such little faith in his driving ability until... I just started him off just, just, and I was pushing the gas and, and the brake, and, and he would drive. I had no faith in his ability to drive, okay? Now, as he continued to practice and his driving ability grew, I went from no faith to little faith. Okay, cool. Now, I sit here and on this side while you drive. Now, every stop sign I got to, because, you know, he was driving so aggressively, every stop sign I got to, I'm pushing the brake. And I, ain't, I don't have any brakes on my side. That little faith, all right? That little faith. And I'm, 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 you know, I'm all, I'm coaching. Watch the look, uh, that little faith in the driving. Well, then, as he got better, I started riding with him and letting him drive to Montgomery. Cool. And I'm sitting back listening to my sermon. Now I'm getting great faith. Now, not so long ago, Mary, I rode with him in the car in Atlanta, on the highway, going to the mall. That's full of faith. But you see how I had to grow from no faith, and the more he worked on it to little faith, the more he worked on it to great faith, the more he worked on it to full of faith. Now he can drive from Atlanta to Montgomery, by, I mean to Auburn, by himself. 
but the faith, my faith in him had to grow. That's the way your faith is. It's got to grow, but it's going to grow only by you taking in the right word the, for your condition, for your circumstances, for your situation. You've got to link the word up with what you are going through. Jesus, remember in Matthew chapter four, when he was going through stuff, Jesus said, it is written, it is written, it is written, it is written. The word of God, your faith must not be in me. Don't put your faith in me. I will let you down. Let me, uh, let me be honest and just get real with you. Do not put your faith in me. Never say what I won't do because you don't know what I'll do. Now you can say that ain't consistent with my pastor. Glory to God. Your faith, Miss Jackson, has to grow. Now, now, uh, dead faith is just as bad as no faith. James chapter two, I believe it was. James talked about uh, a, a dead faith. That's faith without works. So dead faith is just as bad as no faith. I saw somebody on the other day, and I hope they not not attended it on my broadcast. They said uh, they prayed on the Facebook uh, mobbing uh, page. They said, Lord, please bless the homeless because it's cold outside. And I said to myself, I said, it's probably, now they may not have an opportunity to help somebody homeless, but that's what Paul was talking about when, when he says faith without work is dead. For me to pray for the homeless, when I got a home and don't bring them in, that's dead faith. Or for me to pray for the homeless and I got money where I can put them in a motel, that, that faith is not helping that homeless person. Oh my God, let, uh, let me say that again. That's what he means by dead faith. It means faith that's not being put into practice. Faith without corresponding behavior is just as bad as no faith. And to see somebody hungry and say, Lord, please feed them, that faith is dead as it relates to that person. Oh my God, I spent all that time on establishing faith. Why? Because you need to understand that your faith cannot be stagnant, that your faith must grow. And faith cometh by hearing. That's why it's so important, Marita, that we are hearing the right thing. And some of you, all you want to be is entertained. That's why your faith is in being entertained. Some of you, all you want to do is feel good. Your faith is in feeling good. But when, you, but when you want the pure, unadulterated word of God, and everybody ain't broke. Devil, I mean, we act, like, we act like the only thing black folk can preach about is prosperity. <laughs> Glory to God. If you learn the word of God, prosperity will follow you. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. And all of these things, then what he said, all of these things shall be added unto you. All right. So verse two, Paul said, I want to establish you. I sent him to establish you and comfort you concerning your faith. OK, I need you to be firmly rooted in the faith that when you can't find me, Mary, you still know that God is able because you have a word for yourself. Glory to God. Verse three, first Thessalonians, that no man should be moved. So why you need to be firmly established in the faith? Here's why. Why do you need a word for your situation? Here's why. Because trouble is coming. Oh, my God. Beloved, trouble, if it ain't already in your house, it's knocking on your door. I don't receive it. You ain't got to receive it. Trouble coming. Who are you? And you can't go through. Who, who are you that somebody in your family can't get fired? Who are you that somebody in your family can't die? Who are you that somebody in your family can't get their house repossessed? Who are you that somebody in your family can't get cancer? Who are you? <laughs> I mean, come on, let's come on, let's get real. And I don't care whether I don't care what they tell you. You can speak it; it ain't going nowhere. You can pray about it, and Jesus gonna say, and God gonna say, "No, nah, I ain't moving. I, I give you grace." Glory to God. Who are you that you can't have some restless night? Who are you that God can't test your faith? Glory to God. Now, see, we got y'all messed up. Reverend Zimmerman, we got them messed up, Reverend. We got them messed up because they want to quote Isaiah 54, 17. 
and take it all out of context. Ain't no weapon formed against me shall prosper. That's what he said to Israel. And that's what he said to you. But in the context, what he was saying in Isaiah 54, 17, what he was saying is, if you read the context, Israel was in bondage. He was saying, I'm going to get y'all out of bondage. I'm going to send y'all back home. And he says, not only do I make the, uh, uh, the weapons, I, 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 not only am I, do I make the weapons, I'm in control of the person that make the weapons. So what God is saying there is, it doesn't matter what happens, I'm still in control. Because watch this. Uh, 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 y'all, uh, a lot of you all think, uh, uh, will say, um, uh, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Ain't nothing going to get to me. The devil is alive. That's not hermeneutically, con uh, 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 theologically correct. Trouble got to get to you, boo. I don't believe that, Pastor. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Well, 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 you know the scripture, John 16, 33. He said, in this life, you are living, aren't you? Let, let, let me help somebody. Who's going through? He says, in this life, you shall have tribulation, trouble, problem, burden, vicissitude, some sleepless nights, some rough days. He says, in this life, if you live in, he talking to you, you shall have tribulation. But God, Bernice, he said, but be of good courage because I have overcome the world. In other words, if I've overcome my trouble, you can overcome yours. Job 14, he says, man born of woman, right there, is but a few days, and all those days are full of trouble. I ain't making it up. Psalm 34, 19 says, watch this, many are the troubles and affliction of the righteous. But there it is again, but God. But God shall deliver him from how many? From all of them. We have a promise that when we go through, God will deliver us. We won't get stuck in. It won't kill us. So when Isaiah 54, 17 says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper, that does not mean you're not going to get sick. The devil don't care about you getting sick. The devil wants your sickness to turn you against God. The devil does not care about you going broke. The devil wants your brokenness to turn you against God. The devil does not care about hell being in your home. Bernice, he wants the hell in your home to turn you against God. The devil doesn't care about me getting cancer. He wants the cancer in my body to turn me against God. And as long as what I'm going through does not turn me against God, no weapon formed against me, uh, uh, George Hall, shall prosper. That's all it means that it will not work. It will not succeed. It does not matter what the devil throws. I'm not going to turn against God. Where am I going? I'm not going to be like Israel and say, I want to go back to Egypt. <coughs> Somebody should have told them, if you go back, who's going to part the Red Sea? If, if you go back, who's going to part the Jordan River? If you go back, who's going to lead you by day in the cloud? And by now, we, please understand me, you are going to go through some trouble. James said it this way, count it all joy when you go through tribulation. Why? Because we know what you're going through has a purpose, and James said the purpose is to slow you down and teach you patience. So stop running around here thinking like God picking on you, because everybody goes through something. Who are you? You can't go through something. Devil, devil, uh, 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 God allowed the devil uh, to give me cancer, and the first thing I said, who am I that I can't get cancer? It ain't going to turn me against God, Miss Beavers. <laughs> Why? Because I don't have anything other than God. If I didn't have God and the word of God, I would have lost my mind. But I'm standing and I'm leaning and some of you are going through something right now and I need you to stop thinking about going, there's nothing back there. Stand on the word of God. I'm going to pray, God heal my body. And if You thought you were going to lose your mind, but you didn't. Thought you couldn't make it, but you're making it. Now you may now you may be on broken pieces, but you're making it. Paul says in verse number three, when Th uh, Thessalonians chapter number uh, three, he says, verse three, he said that no man should be moved. The reason I want to comfort and strengthen you in the faith. He said that no man should be moved by these afflictions. No, I mean, you should be firm as a rock. Regard to what goes on in your life, you ought to hold on, as the old church say, to God's unchanging hand. For you, for yourselves, know that we were appointed thereunto. Why? To comfort you. 
and to establish you and to teach you the word so your faith could grow. Verse 4, he said, For verily, when we were with you, we told you before that you should suffer tribulation. And if, and if, if anybody teaching you that when you go through, all you got to do is speak it and it's gone, the devil is alive. You can speak it, you can pray about it, you can do whatever you want to do. There are certain things you just got to go through. But he'll give you grace. He will give you grace. Oh my God, think about it. Some of the stuff that some of y'all been through, if it wasn't for his grace, you certainly wouldn't be holding on. He said, even as it came to pass, and you know, we told you it was going to be trouble. Jesus had trouble. Paul had trouble. Read 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 11. Jesus didn't go speaking to my, I speak didn't no. all. He said, okay, look, there's certain things I just got to go through. Because please understand me, Gracie. God is sovereign. Nothing happens in life that God does not permit to happen. That was a tragedy in Tuskegee the other day. Tragedy, tragedy, tragedy. Idiot just shot and killed a little child. We as Christians got to admit God allowed that to happen. You don't know why. You don't know why. When we get to heaven, we'll ask him. <laughs> don't know why, but God, now God didn't cause it. But God is sovereign. We can't have it both ways. I cannot say God is sovereign, but I got cancer. No, God, for some reason, allowed me to get cancer. Now, I know why I got high blood pressure, because I've never seen salt that I didn't like. <laughs> uh, they, my high blood pressure I ain't had nothing to do with the devil. That had to do with everything. That had to do with me and my poor eating habit. And I got that under control now. But what I'm saying is God, as sad and as tragic as it is, for some reason or another, our God, who is a God of love, allowed it to happen. Let me say that again. Our God, who is a God of love, allowed it to happen and we cannot allow and we cannot love God less because he allowed it to happen some of you had tragedies in, in your life mama died my mama died one of the tragedy it was sad mom was 80 some years old okay she had cheated death for five years <laughs> glory, <laughs> glory glory to God I wasn't happy when she left but it wasn't a tragedy this was a tragedy and God allowed it to happen. Now, we may go to heaven and God say, y'all fussing because this, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not talking about that child, now, uh, let's just talk about another child, because this child died. Look, look, would you look how peaceful and happy this child playing PlayStation all day. This, 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 this child is, is, is with me. We have to just resolve. Glory to God. For some reason, God allows bad things to happen to good people. Okay? We're going to go through, all of us going through, all of us going through something. But if our faith is in the word of God, we know God never makes mistakes. Glory, glory, glory to God. Verse number five. For this cause, when I could no longer forbear or bear it, as we said in verse one, I sent to know your faith. Least by some means the tempter have tempted you and our labor be in vain. He said, well, another reason I sent Timothy was to see where your faith was, to see if you all were holding on to God's unchanging hand or, or have you allowed the tribulation. You see, trouble don't build character. Trouble reveals character. Trouble reveals where you are in this faith walk. No faith, little faith, great faith full of faith and see when trouble come you better have faith and what's faith the word of God the reason some of you ain't making it because you ain't making it that's that's a southern globalism but it's because you have no word all you got is to feel good you have no word you have no word you have no word because you're not hungry for the word you will leave a church with no note, with no scripture. You go with no scripture and leave no scripture. You watch a broadcast with no scripture. 
It's all about feel good. All about feel good. All about feel good. All about feel good. What you gonna get? You gonna get your husband next week. You gonna get your wife next week. You, you, you gonna get your miracle. You gonna get your breakthrough. You gonna get your money. You gonna get your honey. You gonna get this. Watch this. You are not going to be healthy and wealthy all the time. Stop allowing people to take scriptures out of context. John 10, I've come that you may have life and have life more abundantly. The charismatic take to take it to me. You ain't gonna never have trouble. The devil is a lie. That's inconsistent with hermeneutic. You're going to have some trouble. But you have the trouble shooter. You're going to have some problems, and you have, but you have the problem solver. Verse 6. Well, i got about five minutes. Verse 6. But, that, but now when Timothy or Timothy came from you unto us, watch this, and brought us good tithing for your faith, mm, for the word of God that you received, and your love. Why did he mention love? Charity. Because the Bible says, Galatians 5, 6, that faith worketh by love. Look at verse 12. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another. When you get established in the word of God, you, because see, the more you love God, the more you will obey God. Okay, that's a principle. The more you love God, he says, he says if, if you love me, you obey me. There's a direct correlation between how much you obey him and how much you love him. Glory to God. He says, and ye have, and, and, and that ye have, you know, Paul, I told y'all Paul had some issues. He had some, I mean, that's some real issues because I would never write this. In other words, he said, and, and, and Timothy told me that you have good remembrance of us always, desiring greatly to see us as we also to see you. Paul said, he reported that you excited to see us. Really, Paul? But this was Paul, okay? He was kind of weird, weird to me, but I guess I'm weird to a whole lot of people. Okay, verse 7. Therefore, brethren, we are comforted over you in all our affliction and distress by your faith. He said, because of your faith, in what in the because of how, oh my God. Give me five extra minutes. He said, because I hear how you handle your trouble, I'm gonna handle my trouble. You see, people are watching you when you say you say sanctify and feel with the Holy Ghost. I got Jesus on my mind. And they are watching to see how you handle your situation. Now, what I need for you all to start doing is to see people, you see you handle your situation based on the word of God. How are you going to handle that? Let's see what the word of God says. How are you going to handle that? Let's see what the word of God says. Trouble, a child in trouble. Let's see what the word of God says. Family in trouble. Let's see what the word of God says. I'm broke. Let's see what the word of God says. <laughs> Sister died. Let's see what the word of God says. Brother died. Let's see what the word of God says. Mama died. Let's see what the word of God says. I'm depressed. Let's see what the word of God says. Because of your faith and not the word of God, it's crazy faith. He said, man, because of the report that I got that how y'all handle it, oh my God. Now I'm going to handle, it inspires me, because Paul was going to handle tribulation the way he had always done it. It's going, it inspires me to handle mine differently. Verse 8. For now we live if we stand fast in the Lord. What, what they mean? We live Glory to God, if we stand, stay established in the word of God, in the Lord, in the word of God, in the Lord, in the word of God. Verse 9, for we thanks, for what thanks can we render to God against? He said, man, I'm grateful for you. I tell you all the time, you, you, you want to make your pastor happy? Grow. Bernice, y'all want to make your pastor happy? Grow in the Lord. Mary, Bernice. Dorothy B was, y'all want to make your pastor happy? Grow. Just, just let him see you grow. Let us see that our preaching and our teaching is not in vain. That you are getting it. That you are standing on the word of God when you are going through. Now, all of us need to lean, somebody lean on every now and then. Glory to God. All of us do. Who told the tow truck? A tow truck that's not dark. Uh, uh, that, uh, 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 that. Who told the big tow truck? A tow truck that's not broken down. Glory, glory to God. Let your pastor see you grow. You want to make him happy? Grow. Cut some of that foolishness out. Do better. Love more. Give more. Become more available. Be more hungry for the word. Okay. Let me go. Verse 11. Now God himself, our Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ, direct our ways unto you. Paul says, man, I want God to direct me. I want to come back to see you. 
Okay, I want to come back to see you. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all, all men, even as we do towards you. He said, I, I need for y'all to love everybody as I have loved you. Verse 13, to the end that, that he may establish, that word again, your hearts, your heart word there is from the word cardia, your inner man, God, even our Father, at, his, at the coming eschatology of our Lord Jesus Christ with all the saints. Glory to God. And that concludes 1 Thessalonians chapter number 3. Okay? We're going to walk all, as, as we do all the way through that. I want you to understand Thessalonians, Paul established the church in Acts chapter 17. Okay? And I want you to know that your faith has to grow. That if you don't have the word, you don't have faith. There are levels of faith. And the more you take in, the more your faith grows. The more your faith grows. Mm, glory to God. The more you are established in the word of God. Then I, then I need you to understand trouble coming. So you might well prepare for it. <laughs> it's coming. And you need more than at the end of the week, they ain't going to get better. No, you need a word. <laughs> you need a word. Glory to God. And that's it. That's it. Now, he ain't going to put no more on you. You can bear. And you can prove that. Now, the Bible never says in those languages. And let me close with this. The Bible never says that in that way. He's not going to put more on you than you can bear. So why y'all say it? We say it because we know etymology. We say it because we understand the root meaning of word. Remember James said, count it all joy when you go through diverse temptations. The word temptation there does not mean a test of sin. It means trials, tribulations, and burdens, and problems. So because we understand that, okay? So if anybody tell you the Bible doesn't say he ain't going to put more on you than you can bear, take them to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse number 13, okay? It says, there is no temptation. Same words in James. Trials, tribulation, trouble, burden. That's common to man that he has not given you a way out. He ain't going to put more on you. Translation, he's not going to put more on you than you can bear. Glory to God. God bless y'all. Uh, that's it. For, for for tonight, if you enjoyed, I will enjoy it. If you were helped and were spiritually enlightened by the message, share it. And if you shame to share the gospel on your Facebook page, there's something wrong with you. All right? Uh, uh, start sharing these sermons. And and the people that are telling you, stop sharing them, then you need to uh, leave or blank them anyway. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Uh Miss Charles, good evening to you. Let, let me speak to some people. I think Jane has already put up our uh, way of giving. MTV, y'all did well last year. Uh, let's, con uh, let's continue. Dorothy B was in the house tonight. God bless you, Dot. Uh, Enid Reese, our friend down 29. Good evening to you. Uh, blanket Drive, Mount Vernon is collecting blankets. I think it's in connection with a ministry at uh, Arm University where they give blankets to the poor people or those who need blankets. So, MTV is partnering with them. And so, I'm not sure. Uh, Tanya will tell y'all more about that tomorrow because uh, I can't see the rest of that. But uh, if you got a, a going back to church when y'all get the vaccine all right we're going back to church when everybody get the vaccine now if you cannot get the back if there's a medical reason why you cannot get it cool then we have a special place for you but if you if you if you don't have a medical reason for not getting the vaccine if you come in mtv you need to get it okay you need to get the vaccine i'm ready to go back to church i got my first vaccine last week and I'll uh, get the next one in March. I'm looking, I'm excited about it because I'm ready to get back around my kids. I'm ready to get back around my friends. I'm, <laughs> I'm ready to get back around my family. 
and I can't do it until everybody is vaccinated. Okay, so I need for y'all. Oh, well, I can't tell y'all to get vaccine. Uh, I can't do that. Okay, I need y'all check with your doctor and make sure that you can get vaccine. And if you can, and doc say you can get it, then you need to get it. Okay, so y'all ain't gonna hold me lie, but he told me to do it. No, no, no I'm, I'm telling you, check with your doctor. I got it. So I, I, I did, but 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 if you plan on coming to, coming to church, you you need to get the vaccine. I guess I'm telling you, kind of, kind of give me. Okay, let me protect myself. This the CDC guidelines say that we all need to get the virus. <laughs> Y'all know I'm silly. Oh my God, Denitra, good evening to you. I'm waiting on my second one too, cause I'm ready to go back to church. I, I've been working on some Baptist runs. Yep, been working on some Baptist runs, and I want to do some. I want to do a little, just a little bit of Baptist preaching. Uh, glory to God. Tanya will be on tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. Uh, we canceled the Thursday night. Uh, and then we'll be back Sunday morning at um, 9. God bless y'all. Until next time. Peace, y'all. Okay, Tanya said not the virus. Oh, oh uh, I don't know what I would say, get the virus. No, I, I don't want you to get the virus. I, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Get the vaccine. Okay, not the virus. <laughs> Get the vaccine. Okay. God bless y'all. Thank you, Tanya. Peace.